Alright then, hello there, uh, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the uh, loud fans, uh, but uh, let's go. Um, uh, uh, timing actually starts when I when I first do my movement, but that's kind of a dumb timing scheme, so I'm, uh, instead I'm going to have it timed from uh, when I select Regent's Park. So uh, I guess three, two, one, go. And there might be delay because I don't have like fast thing majig. Anyways, this is one of two Dalmatians. Um, one of my favorite games of all time, especially speed games. Um, played it when I was a little kid, but I wasn't like really good at it. Uh, this level is kind of all visual based. I can't really explain anything because it's so fast. Um, but basically, there's a lot of very precise. Um, Slope rolls, which uh, is like a colloquial term for um, when you roll down a hill, like any incline, uh, when you're rolling, uh, you get extra speed depending on how steep that that uh, the incline is, and that's kind of like one of the main speed techs of this entire game. And that first level is entirely slope roll based. This level is kind of straightforward. Um, there's like a, a glitch that can save two seconds, but it's not a too impactful. Save two seconds. Um, it's only for like super duper people who want to get a really good time. Uh, but here is the exit. So these first couple levels are not that that crazy. This whole category, um, glitchless, is really boring, but it's very chill because the glitches in this game are unforgiving. You basically have to um, get stuck in between polygons, and then you get pushed out whenever you bump up against something. This is Piccadilly. There are no useful glitches in this level, so it's exactly the same both in all levels and glitchless. Fuck. Oh shoot. Okay. Okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say these words. This is not me. I, I'm not. I'm not that. Okay. Anyways, Big Ben. This is where the where I fell in love with the speed game when I was uh, first testing it a few years ago. Um, the platforming in this level is very fun. First things first is a shortcut right here. Saves about three, four seconds thereabouts. We have to make this cycle. This is where you learn that everything in this game is cycle based. No matter where you are in the freak. Okay. Uh, we rolled off that, unfortunately. That's it's kind of. Can't expect it to be perfect. But right here, you're going to want to switch to oddball because later in the game, um, there's an unskippable cutscene with, with a little bit of dialogue. And depending on which puppy you have, that dialogue changes. So therefore. You want to have Oddball because Oddball has a shorter dialogue. Okay, and now since I messed up that, that room, these cycles are going to be all out of sync. They're usually really well lined up if you're fast enough. I don't even know how this is going to play out. So this is interesting. But yeah, so this is where you learn that everything is cycle based. No matter where you are in the level, what room you're in. Because this game has a lot of rooms. It's always gonna... Aw, oh, shoot. I was afraid this was gonna happen. I was practicing earlier. I was like, okay, this is one area where I'm gonna get, you know, completely screwed over. This is really difficult. Um, okay. Okay, we're good. Okay. Is, is my audio good? Like, is, uh, is everything, uh, can you hear me well? And here's the final room. This is where cycles don't really matter as much. Uh, you just have to have good execution for this last room. And, yo, we got in there.
Oh my gosh, it's Lance. I was not aware that my hero was here. My hero academia. And we're done with Big Ben. Yep. Even though my video quality is bad, I still have some good audio. So this is, uh, you have to stun her. And this is the main strat. So you just keep going back and forth with this big a a a af bell. Um, Aw, oh, thank you, Lance. You're so, you're so kind. Alright. Shortcut. Jump across this. This level is uh, kind of a break from the norm you've seen so far. Um, all levels up to this point were uh, linear based, but this is like a fetch quest. It's one of a couple fetch quests in the game. Uh, basically, you just take um, these items back to this dude and he'll give you another item to collect. Uh, and it is kind of confusing to first, you know, when you're first running the game, you're like, what the heck, where am I supposed to go? But it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. There's a glitch right here. Um, uh, if you're too far up, like if you jump out of that out of that loading zone to get out of that room, there's actually a loading zone that's directly above that, and you'll be put on top, on the upper uh, layer. And that loses a good 10 seconds. Like, you can see up there, there's like a area you can walk on. And there's a door. You do not want to go through that. It, it's a run killer. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to the pyramid. The pyramid has a very interesting property. In that it is, it is incredibly, incredibly steep. So as you're going to see, the slope roll is the fastest it, it can ever be in, in this game. It can actually be faster than that, but I, I messed up a bit. It can actually be like, like Mondo fast, like blink of an eye fast. Blink and you'll miss it. And the donut is the final object I need to get. And then we can finally go to Fluffy and get the heck out of here. This next level is a pain in, in all levels because there's a, a clip and this is actually the very first like main clip that you're going to do in the, in the run but thank gosh I'm actually running glitchless so I don't have to do it. You would go to that box over there, you get stuck in between the wall and the box and then you'd push yourself outwards with the box. Instead, you go around here in, in Glitchless, and these these will be lowered once you kill the two enemies in each uh, each of them. And it's actually very easy to get hit by these. There's some times where I come in there and I'm I have like very low health, and then I unironically die in that area, and it's so so disheartening. But anyways, that's underground. Now it's time for Carnival. This is the shortest level in the entire run, and you'll see why. You will see. And it should be there any moment now. And there you are. We're, we're done. <laughs> uh, it amazes me how... how, how, how crazily easy that is and here's lumber mill um this is where a second very very powerful glitch would be done and there's many ways you can do this glitched uh gg what do you mean what what happened Uh -huh. 
Oh, I see. I thought I thought I went offline. Uh, fun fact: that that key sprite is actually taken from an earlier game by Toys for Bob. Oh, okay, that's another thing. Um, on every single retail version of this game, it says it was made by Crystal Dynamics, but they were not the actual people who made this. It was actually Toys for Bob, believe it or not. Um, the same people doing the Reignited trilogy. Crap. This is awful. This is the worst boss in the game. I have no qualms with saying that. It's so easy to lose time here because it's so difficult to get these freaking things to go and connect. Come on. Are you kidding? And that was the unskippable cutscene. Uh, if you were Domino when you went into there, uh, what would have happened would be like to say, ha ha ha. I think we've almost got her. And that takes a couple more seconds. Countryside. Pretty straightforward level two. It's just three different rooms. There's a cool glitch right here that if you get it, it saves like five seconds. If I can get it. Ah, shoot. If you can, if you can thread the needle there, then um, you save five seconds. I must have saved at least maybe two seconds. Oh shoot, going the wrong way. And now it's time for the second fetch quest. We have to do chores around the barn. First things first, gotta give water because he's a thirsty man or pig next you must unjam the windmill and next we need to herd the chickens Shoutouts to Hurdy Gurdy. Shoutouts to Brandon. But first things first, we're going to set up for a potential skip that I don't think I'll get, but we'll try it anyway. Hello there, Tanya Darkness. How are you doing? Welcome. have gotten it basically those are okay um there's two cutscenes but if you death warp during the like before the cutscenes even happen you skip them and you save about five seconds okay I always get confused on where to go after after the chickens and I just stand around like an idiot like wondering where to go you have to go around this way get hip oh sh oh no oh no that's not good. Your soul is dark. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it gets better. Now we gotta drain the silo. Of what? I think it's grain. I'm not sure what it could be either. Maybe it's crap? I never watched the cutscene, so I don't know. And now we're going to do another death warp. Funny thing is, this death warp is right next to a piece of uh, a piece of meat. And meat in this game actually restores your health. So there is a potential that you need to take another hit. If you do collect that. I don't know. It's, it's in a really weird spot. Almost like it's being guarded. Alright, there's the second use of the pandemonium key. Where are the other 101? We gotta go save them. But in this in this category, we're not gonna save them. We're not saving any of them. We're going straight for the head honcho. 
Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah. So we have to um, knock down the outhouse because he has indoor plumbing now. He doesn't need the outhouse. Get out of here. I hate you. There's actually two dogs. Two dogs. Um, uh, I guess I can do this. Because the place where it's used is, yeah. Okay, now the Ice Festival. This gives me PTSD because in all levels, you have to do a, a very difficult trick. Very precise. You have like a few frames to do it. Maybe even just one frame. And it's caused lots of uh, uh, stress in my life. <laughs> but yeah, um, thank gosh I don't have to do that. <laughs> Indoor plumbing hype. Let's go. <laughs> There's a cool trick you can do right here. I don't know if I'm going to get it. Oh, here we go. Super fast slide. And we out of there. The next level is Ancient Castle, which for some reason Brandon Scott Hill, also known as XYX, seems to love this song. He's the person who you saw before, playing Rascal for the PS1, and he loves this song. Yeah. I'm trying to sound like an announcer. <laughs> Some guy said that I sound like a news anchor. Ah! We out of there. We're out of Ancient Castle. Here's a very different boss. Instead of, like, immediately hitting Corella, you basically have to get her close enough to you so that you can use the, uh, the catapult. And you have to get rid of these shields. I think they're shields. And now we can finally hit her. Let's do it. Sometimes you can sneak a hit in there, but we didn't this time. But regardless, dead nonetheless. Now we're in the last stretch of levels. Only five levels remaining, including the last boss. Now it's time for the hedge maze. This is the only bit of RNG in the entire run. Because there's a puzzle, a sorting puzzle, that is in a random configuration each time you reset or re-enter the level. We don't know what causes this, and we don't know how to fix it or manipulate it. All we know is that 
there's a potential to lose at least 10 seconds. Yeah, puppy rolling takes a bit of practice. It's like a rhythm. Oh no! Um, I accidentally did it the wrong way. Whoops, I screwed myself. I haven't dropped any frames, what a wonderful day. It's time for Deville Manor. We've infiltrated her place of dwelling. And we're almost to the toy factory with the heart of darkness. There's a cool trick you can do here. Um, there's like a ventilation system. And yet again, you're using your slide. Let's see if I can get it. See how fast you go? Man. We're almost done. One more level and then the final boss. This is actually the longest level in the game, besides Barnyard. But of course, that's non-linear, so that doesn't count. There's actually a PS1 exclusive trick in this one level, and it actually proves that the PS1 version has kind of a slightly different collision engine than the PC version. And that applies in many different areas, so that's why if you look on the leaderboards, PC and console are both separate. Because we know the collision engine is at least a little bit different, and it causes many like glitches to be impossible across platforms. So it takes a different set of skills. Also, on PS1, when you roll, the camera actually locks behind you. But on this one, for some reason, it doesn't do that. So you have to manually move the camera yourself. And now we're going to try to do an epic trick. Normally you'd have to press three separate buttons to get across here. We only pressed one. Haha. <laughs> Final boss time. Let's defeat Corella Deville. First phase, you have to destroy these uh, shields here. Okay, one phased it. Now you have to destroy these uh, faces. Come on. Oh! No, what have I done? Finally, the last phase, we have to destroy what seems to be twirling balls of energy. The last one should appear in this corner here. And on time. Oh shoot, no. And time. Bada bing, bada boom, you're dead. Have a good time in hell. Not the super gloop! Jam dance available! Heck yeah! Thank you guys for watching. Um, 
And also, if you can, make sure to donate to that suicide prevention thingamajig. That's really awesome, what, what the guys are doing here. Uh, have a good one.